This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. With me is Mr. Juggernaut himself over Zoom, Joe Joyce. Obviously, we've seen uh, a lot of heavyweight action this weekend. Uh, it's got the world talking, so I wanted to get your thoughts, Joe, as uh, you're in line uh, for that shot at, at the moment, Alexander Usyk, who is reigning WBO world champion. What did you make of uh, the titles changing hand and going back to Ukraine? Yeah, I was quite surprised, but I, you know, I could see how either of them could win the fight. And I mean, I originally said Joshua was going to win, but, um, you know, I also you know, thought how I could see how Usyk could win too. So, um, you know, tactically, I don't know if they made the right decision with, because um, Joshua just like, had, you know, wanted to box a boxer. And, um, you know, I thought like he was kept it very clean. And um, yeah, so she didn't go as planned, but uh, you know, good for Usyk and makes changes things up, makes things interesting. Because like, you know, we don't know. Because now there's the other fight with uh, Fury Wilder and the three, and so we're going to see how that gone, how that goes. But it's all very interesting. Like there's so many different fights out there to be made, and you know, the twists and turns. It's like um, you know, it's at, it's at a, you know, exciting point where. You know, there's lots of different manoeuvres and things that can happen. And yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be, a heavy, to be a heavyweight. Absolutely. And uh, a lot of people have said that Joshua started the fight wrong. H how would you have poached the, the first three or four rounds against uh, Alexander Usyk, Joe? The, um, Usyk came out fast. I knew exactly what he was doing. I thought, because normally Usyk takes like a good few rounds to like start, you know, getting the opponent's timing and, I like see what what they've got and whatever. So, um, and I thought it, I thought the first couple of rounds would start off like kind of like that, kind of cagey, and you know who's going to throw, throw. But um, yeah, Usyk was straight in there, got, got stuck in and and stuff. But um, yeah, I've, what was your question? I said, how would you have approached like the third, well, the first three or four rounds? Because uh, I think Anthony's been getting a lot of criticism about how he started. And I think I think the fight started fine. Like it, it was straight into the action, and I guess Joshua was trying to establish his jab and range and stuff, and obviously deal with a uh, difficult, tricky southpaw because uh, Usyk was, you know, kind of, he was slipping his head and moving his feet and you know making it difficult for Joshua. And um, you know, he's even beat into the jab at some sometimes. You know, slipping and throwing the jab and stuff. So it's some some great technique, technical skill going in there. And um, yeah, I just I just personally think um, Joshua could have. I was waiting for him to like land a big punch or start. You know, especially the last two rounds, like come in and mm. put some shots together and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was a good fight to watch, and you know they'll probably do it again. So we'll see what the outcome of the second fight is going to be. Yeah, as you said, there's a rematch clause, so we expect that to happen early 2022, according to Eddie Earn. So, Joe, um, in your opinion, how does that result change? How does Anthony go about it? If you was training him, what would you say to him? And, and do you see a different outcome at all? Um, I don't know. You know how it is with the second fight. It's either like, you know, either they win and get it back or they lose and they don't get it back so it's, it's uh you know it's a tricky one like, i think what you know there's plenty more he can do because you know the, he's got solid uh foundation ba basics and that that he was doing but i think he he was being very tidy with his work is you know like he didn't um he didn't you know try and like hold him or you know, maneuver like you know, put put his weight on him and try and dig a few big shots in, or come forward and cut, close the ring off. What I thought he was going to do, I thought he was going to try and cut the ring off and start winging some bombs at him. Um, but I think he was being quite economical and trying to uh, be able to last the whole fight. So mm. I don't know. Mm. And from what you saw, I mean, we've seen Usyk at heavyweight in a couple of fights before, but. This was a fight against a, an elite opponent and um, the first time at heavyweight for him. From what you saw of Usyk in them 12 rounds, are you fully confident when that WBO call comes, if Usyk is still champion, you go in there, beat him and become WBO world champion? 100%. Yeah, I'm 
put my name down now. <laughs> like, um, yeah, that's if that's you know, it's a great challenge, a rematch, and um, yeah, I'd love that fight, especially if it's for. Sorry. I should correct myself. I said become WBL world champion. I need to correct myself. Become unified world champion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that is obviously the fight that I want. I mean, I'd fight either of them or anyone. So right. sign the contract. No, we'll just have to see how things go on. And then, um, you know, I'll get my shot. Unless he wants to fight now. <laughs> well, listen, that's up to... That's that kind of lies in the hands of Anthony Joshua and their team. Obviously, if they activate the rematch clause, you've got to wait for a bit. But at least your position cemented with the WBO, and, and you know that that phone's going to ring soon, Joe. Yeah, I'm just waiting by the telephone. <laughs> well, listen, the old ones where you dial the number. No, joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of your immediate future, last time I spoke to you was at your call, and you said that you believe that Luis Ortiz and their team refused some offers and, and I spoke to Adam Morley about that and he confirmed that as well and Lewis Ortiz had come out recently and said no we didn't have any offers I haven't refused any offers so what's going on with that Ortiz situation and also if it is an Ortiz next have we got an opponent in mind? I don't know perhaps um, perhaps Ortiz was trying to save face but I'm sure they've sent him a couple of offers a couple of times because I you know I even did a face off of him back in Vegas like a while ago so I've always like you know, he said he, he want to fight me, so um, we'll see if we can make that fight. If he's um, if he hasn't got said offer, but um, yeah, there's uh, you know, there's plenty of other fights there, and uh, I'm just I'm just waiting for a call from Adam myself with a uh, name of a new opponent. Okay, we're we looking at. I know you haven't got a, a specific time frame, but from what Adam, Sam, and Frank have said, are we looking like end of the year, November time that you'll be back out? Yeah, yeah, before yeah, before Christmas. Perfect. All right, Joe, listen, we look forward to that ring return after your win over Carlos Takam last time. And as I said, obviously, this shake-up of the heavyweight division, you're just waiting there with a the WBO. So, yeah, things will... Uh, we'll see how things go. But, yeah, appreciate yeah, you. See how things pan out and I'll, I'll get there, man. I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just waiting myself. I'm you know, ticking over in the ring in, in training and stuff and getting ready for the next one. I can't wait. That's the one. We all want to see the juggernaut in a world title fight. Um, appreciate your time on IFL TV and we'll speak soon. Take care, Joe. All right. Well, so